Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Now we're going to take a look at the press conference that was held by Judge Peterson's attorney. It would appear that they have their own impression about exactly what happened that day or that night, and we're going to review it. We're going to talk about it, and uh, we'll see exactly what you all think about it once we're done. But here you go. Here's the press conference as it was held, and this is attributed to Fox News, Fox 5, which is a news uh, channel there, an outlet in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's get into this. All right, good afternoon. My name is Marvin Arrington Jr. I'm the attorney representing uh, Christina Peterson. I want to thank you all for being here today. Um, as the investigation continues to unfold and more facts come to light, we believe that Judge Christina Peterson will be completely exonerated of these charges. Uh, at least two eyewitnesses have stated that Judge Christina Peterson will only try to help uh, Ms. Love, who was being brutally and viciously attacked by a man outside of the Red Martini nightclub. Uh, Miss Kelly and Miss Love, Miss Kelly is the friend of Miss Love, the woman that was attacked. Uh, they simply want to know why the man was not arrested and why was Judge Peterson arrested for simply trying to be a good Samaritan and help a woman that was in distress. We are anxious to see the video. Okay, so I'm going to have to interrupt here, obviously, because this is a review. Not only is it a review, I don't own this information. And so as it uh, unfolds, I want to interject. I don't think this has anything to do with the fact as why the man was not arrested when she was just trying to help. I believe that it's everything that took place after the police arrived and being a court official, she should have thought that this would be inappropriate behavior or just stay out of it and wait to speak to the attorneys. That's my assessment of exactly what he's talking about. I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that they did not pursue the man. I think she made a big enough mess to where they had to deal with what they were dealing with at that time, as opposed to going to seek out another person if that makes sense. Let's continue. From Red Martini Nightclub and other nearby businesses, as well as footage from the police body cameras. Based on the eyewitness testimony and the female victim, we believe the videos will confirm that Judge Peterson should not have been arrested. We look forward to her complete exoneration and dismissal of these charges. We call on the Atlanta Police Department to arrest the man that was seen in the video assaulting Ms. Love viciously and violently. Do we not think that he's conflating these two issues? You guys let me know down below in the comments. Is he conflating this? Because to me, these are two different situations, albeit if it were not for letter A, they wouldn't be dealing with letter B. They wouldn't be dealing with this situation right now. But by the same token, I don't believe that this even should be mentioned. Another thing I want you guys to pay very close attention to, even if you have to rewind it, is her countenance. She still has that specific air of ego. There's no humility with this poor lady. Silently, we call for the immediate release of any and all body camera footage from this incident and any other footage obtained by the police. We call on the Atlanta Police Department to dismiss these charges against Judge Peterson. This is living proof of no good deed goes unpunished. The idea that a good Samaritan who was helping a woman that was being viciously attacked could be arrested and the man who was viciously attacking the woman could not see even the equipment know he's full of mess. She should have chosen another attorney. This whole entire thing looks like garbage. She didn't think it out, immediately wants to run and have somebody stand in her stead. And when you consider that this guy is really, uh, he's inept at best. This is just a, this is just a big show to me. And it reminds me of a, of a clown show. 
it's just a mess. It really does look like a masquerade show, if you understand what I'm really trying to say here. Did not get arrested. Speaks to other issues that will be addressed at a later time. We call on District Attorney Fonnie Willis to personally review this matter and to dismiss these frivolous charges. How is it frivolous when the woman was breaking the law? People, this is part and parcel of the issue right now where folks feel like they can just do anything they want. And now let's go ahead and call Fonnie Willis to take the heat off of her friend if they even know one another, right? Let's call Fonnie Willis in here because Fonnie understands that this is a frivolous lawsuit. Fonnie understands that no matter what the camera showed, no matter what this Judge Peterson's actions were, she's going to get exonerated specifically because she's Judge Peterson. She was coming to the aid of another quote unquote woman. She was trying to help another woman. Why is she being held accountable for this when she was just trying to help? That's the mindset that they're using. And that's the mindset that this guy is peddling right now. Instead of just dealing specifically with her actions and instead of just dealing specifically with her, they drag everybody in front of the camera to gain some type of unfounded sympathy for this whole situation of which there is very little. And these poor people really should not have wanted to attach themselves to Judge Peterson, considering everything she's been going through lately. If these folks stood any opportunity to sue anybody, and if there's any validity to some phantom quote unquote male uh, gentleman who was accosting this lady, they've pretty much thrown themselves at the mercy of whomever it would be that, uh, be it that they like her or they dislike her. They're throwing themselves at that individual or that group's mercy. That's a problem. I would want to run as far away from this woman as I possibly could if I were this family. Irregardless to what they look like, irregardless to who they are, they allegedly didn't know her before this happened, or did they? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they were out partying together, and the reason why she jumped in it was because she saw it from the inside of the club and just wanted to get, get busy and get involved. You messing with my girl? We don't know the particulars, and see, that's the problem. They should have broken it down first and then decided what the best course of action should be at this time i'm going to ask miss kelly who is the friend of miss love the lady that was being attacked to come forward and to make a brief statement uh, good afternoon everybody um this is not something that i really wanted to speak on but when i saw that someone was arrested for simply helping my friend my friend was being viciously, viciously attacked and I saw a perfect stranger that I had never seen before in my life do something that I wasn't even brave enough to do. She stepped up and helped my friend. This man was three times my friend's size. I was trying to grab men around us to help. So by the time I turn around, I see this person just flying by me and I didn't know who she was. But I just know she helped my friend. And if she hadn't helped, I don't know what we would be saying today. So I want to thank you. And that's all I had to say. And now we were here for Miss Love, who was the woman that was being viciously attacked. <clears throat> Hello. Good afternoon, you guys. My name is Alexandria Love. I am the woman that was attacked um, Thursday morning, about 2.33 o'clock, by a man I don't know. He pushed me down. He, I scraped my elbows. He viciously attacked me, fist force, punched me in my face. And she was the only- Okay, where's the punch? If a man, okay, come on, you guys, y'all know me. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not trying to discount nobody's pain. I'm not trying to discount her interaction with this alleged man. I'm not trying to do any of that. I'm asking the questions that I know you thinking. If a man viciously attacked her and punched her in her face only days before this recording, where is the punch? Where did he punch her? 
Was she wearing a T-shirt with her face on it and he punched her in the chest? Did she have a hat that he punched off her head? Where is the punch? And they keep using this term viciously, which is the reason why I say if there's any validity in this woman's claim, she should have divorced herself from Judge Peterson because it appears like they're grasping straws. I don't know. Maybe Judge Peterson wasn't, and this is alleged, this is my take. Maybe Judge Peterson wasn't in the public eye enough with all of the shenanigans that she had going on over the past four years. Maybe they just decided that people really needed to get a little more angry about Judge Peterson's actions. And maybe this story is all fabricated. I don't know. But what I do know is you cannot get in front of a camera only days after an incident and say that you were viciously attacked and punched in the face without nothing being broken by a man who was allegedly more than two sizes bigger than your friend who from the camera standpoint is standing directly to the left of you. You just can't. Let's go. Only one that helped me. She the only one that was grabbing to help me. Everyone else in that video was his friends, grabbing him, trying to grab him, but could not uh, attain him. She was the one that was grabbing him. She didn't mean to hit the officer. The officer swooped in and grabbed me up. He didn't even care to see the, per the man, the big man that was actually brutally hitting me in my face. So when she see him, Grabbing me. She didn't know it was the officer. She thought I was still being hurt and attacked. The officers walked up after she was already on the ground and the guy was in front of her face. Officers was nowhere in sight. Nowhere. Because I would have grabbed the officer, but I was grabbing strangers and the guys with the red shirts that worked for Red Martini. If there was an officer there, I would have talked to the officer. Officers was nowhere on sight until after this lady was already in the police car. And five police cars came they all left when they took her i had to sit there and call 9 and just feel horrible that nobody actually helped me i've never been in that situation all right now we're coming with the waterworks which i believe that are very appropriate i mean just to recant a situation or to you know go back in your mind and think about a bad circumstance where no one assisted you i get it okay and if this is a reality the tears are warranted but still, the divorcing of this situation from this woman needs to happen expeditiously. The attorney that is standing there allegedly is for Judge Peterson, and it's not their attorney from what I can see. Now, if there's somebody else out here who's got some legal eyes on this situation or this circumstance, maybe you can correct us. But from what I see, this is her attorney attempting to get, and by her I mean Peterson, attempting to gain the public um, sympathy for her attempting to sway the public to stand in her stead and say, Hey, help her. Let her be free. She's not supposed to be here for a felony. She was just helping somebody and I get it, but I don't get it because for me, I would have said, no, sir, we're not interested in going before the media yet. We are attaining our own counsel. Now I'm watching this for the first time with you. Her counsel just very well may be a part of this. And by her, I mean the young lady. Okay, Miss Love. I believe maybe maybe her attorneys are present. And if they are, maybe we'll hear from them. But at this point, there should have been a total separate, a separate press conference. Because that's really what's needed in order for anybody to gain any form of clarity in this circumstance. Let's continue. You should be for my life. <laughs> So, as you can hear, the officers did not even take the statements of Ms. Love, nor of Ms. Kelly, or any of the other witnesses. They did not detain this gentleman, uh, and we believe that this uh, is a travesty of justice. Uh, and we're calling on the Atlanta police and the district attorney to dismiss these charges immediately and to charge this man for his violent acts on yesterday, early yesterday morning. Oh, wow. Thank Wait you. a minute. Wait a minute. So at the date of this recording, it was early yesterday morning that she was punched in the face by a man at least two sizes bigger than her friend girl that's standing behind her. Really? She was punched in the face by a man at least two sizes bigger than her friend girl. 
punched and there's absolute, what kind of cream is she using? I need to know. <laughs> I mean, come on now, tell me, what is she using? This thing is going to be torn apart. And poor Christina Peterson, honey, I don't know exactly what pawn uh, you play, what part of the pawn show you play, but this is a rump, hot rump mess. It's a buttered mess. And this dodo here, her attorney, my God, where do they get these people? And what do they do? What, what year did these individuals graduate from law school and then attain the board and then go to the board and get their, uh, and get their licensure? When? How? Where do they get them from? This guy can't even put two sentences together with the bow tie and whatnot. Let me continue here. Come on. Can you explain? I don't think you're going to have the judge talk, right? No. Can you explain her state of mind right now, what she's going through? Well, I think she uh, certainly uh, has had a lot to deal with in the last 24 hours. Uh, but certainly, she does not know these women. They did not know her. Uh, they just know that she was the person that tried to help save this young lady. And so... Um, I think in the heat of the moment, a lot of things happened and maybe the officers got confused, but certainly someone should have at least investigated or taken these people's names and numbers. Five police cars left the scene without speaking to the victim. That That's just not right. I, I do want to thank the cops that did come at the end because they were able to calm my friend down. So the cops that did take our statement after the fact, I do want to thank them because they actually did help us. Red Martini would not even let us back in the building. We were still standing out there while she had just got assaulted and the club would not even let us back in. Well, what happened in the club? Somebody. Did somebody try to explain to police that night that she was a peacemaker? Yes, it's all in our statement. I, would, I refused. I refused because she was hysterical. She would not talk. I refused to leave that, that building until somebody got me on statement saying that an innocent person had got locked up, that we did not know no. who she was. And we did not understand why she got locked up. And the gentleman that did this got away freely. He just walked away like it was nothing. And you, you didn't know who the gentleman was? No, we, no, we don't know. And Judge, was Judge Peterson just like leaving the club and happened to witness? She was or? simply walking outside. That's what somebody, one of my other friends told me that lady just walked outside and saw what was going on and took off and helped her friend. She didn't even think twice. And that's rare. A stranger, when I saw other people that knew me that just stood there and looked, <laughs> that was crazy to me. So that's why I put the post on Instagram yesterday because I know that's rare for somebody to not even take a second thought to help somebody that they did not know. And what does she say on that post? Do you have any, type, any kind of a lead on yes. the man that you're looking for? Mm -hmm. what, yes. What? I think that we do have found some information, but we'll be turning that information over to the authorities. And what I said on my post is that I just saw that a judge was taken to jail for something that she did not do. All she did was simply help my friend that was being viciously attacked by a gentleman three times her size and at this point, I made that post because I had to let people know we don't even know this lady. We don't know anything about her for her to stand up for a stranger. Is it just me or is this guy's suit incredibly? He looks like a mess. Ah, eesh, the aesthetics for me. It's the aesthetics for me, people. That's the aesthetics. Bozo. Not only is it bozo, but again, these two situations should not be together. It should have been a separate press conference. And if this lady wanted to be the spokesperson for her friend, she is the only person, even if it may be scripted, because I don't know anymore, right? I don't know. I wish I knew, but this person is the only person that sounds like they make half, just even, just a little bit of sense. Just a little bit of sense. This this attorney, baby, she needs to switch him out quickly. She would have been better having Nathan Wade stand up in her stead. <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, but let's get through this because uh, it's uh, sickening at best. When all these men were standing there and nobody would help, that means a lot to me. 
So I had to, I had to speak my truth for her. And then when she was in the moment, I know that she did not want to harm no, nobody. nobody. So if, if I don't know what happened, but I know she purposely did not want to harm mm -hmm. a cop. I can tell that. And I just met her 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Ms. Lum, I'm curious what you think about the justice system. It's such an interesting case where they failed me. Like, they failed they me horribly. And yet you had a judge who came to your defense. Yes, you see how God works? God works in mysterious ways. Which speaks to the character. I want to know, are any of these people from the press going to ask what happened inside the club to allow this to ensue? Let's watch. Character of Judge Peterson. Yes. Marvin, which charges especially stand out to you that you really want to fight in terms of what the judge is facing? Well, the investigation is early. I want to fight all of them. I don't believe she should have been charged at all, but we want to wait to see the video. We want to see the body cam video. We want to see the video from Red Martini and any other nearby businesses uh, because we think that that information will it completely exonerate Judge Peterson. Are you worried about just what we've seen in the last 24 hours impacting her reputation as a judge and her character? It's been challenged. How is she feeling about that? Well, uh, I'm sure she would love to say some things today uh, to clear her name, but uh, I think that Miss Love and Miss Kelly have done that for her. And I don't know that she needs to say anything. And we're just thankful that they were there and that they saw, they told the truth uh, and let everyone know what happened, what actually happened. Uh, and it's, it's just really a travesty that uh, the only person, that the Good Samaritan is the person that got locked up. I mean, that is, uh, it's just a travesty. Yes, um uh, you suffered injury. What injury did you suffer? Um, I have a black eye. I have my glasses on. Um, I have a sprain. My thumb is sprained. Wrist and my thumb. Okay, um, she's got a black I eye. Scratches under my elbows from the fall. Um, I have skin off of my toes. That's why I can't wear any heels. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, lower back pain, swelling. How did it all start? Um, in line for food. I apologize to the young woman that he was with that, um, you know, I pushed her after she started being aggressive with me. And I apologize several times. He's behind me, calling me names, calling me out my name, being vicious. So I turn around because I felt at this point I'm being threatened. She's on the right of me. He's literally standing, hovering over me. And I'm right behind. The She's right. Yes. So I turn around and I say, why are you trying to provoke me? Why are you calling me out my name? And that's where it started. He pushed me down. Mr. Eric, I know you're calling for uh, release of several uh, pieces of video. You're asking for the DA to get involved. What's your next step, your next move in this case? Uh, well, you know, the case will progress. Um, Hopefully it will not get uh, indicted. She's been charged with felonies, which we think is completely uh, inappropriate. Uh, and so uh, the police do the initial charging and then the district attorney's office will determine whether they should take those charges to a grand jury or not. And so uh, we, do not, we don't believe that there should be any indictment that comes out of this. Uh, we believe that the Atlanta police should dismiss the charges and if they can't dismiss them, that the district attorney's office should. Did she refuse to tell the officers who she was? Well, I don't know that who she is or who she was is relevant to what was What's wrong with to the mouth? vicious attack by the man on Miss Love. Um, I think that there were probably some bystanders that informed the officers that she was a judge, but I don't believe that Judge Peterson told them that she was a judge. I think she was there with friends. She was there for a birthday party, in fact. Um, birthday guy right there. Uh, <laughs> she was there for a birthday party, in fact. And so uh, she had several of her friends that were also there as well. <laughs> and a, at least two of them were also witnesses. The party was at Green Martini? I believe that it was. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you all. All right. So now we see exactly what's going on. We hear exactly what happened in part. And let me know what you guys think. Do you think it was even necessary for them to all be huddled up together? Or do you think that maybe they should have sort of maybe 
got another attorney for her because he know I'm going to ride him out. Busted lip, looking like he was involved in the incident himself. And then all the stuff on the side of his mouth, needing some water. I don't know where she found this dude. I don't know if he got his, his law license on the back of a Kool-Aid uh, container. I don't know. I just know that what I view just now with you for the first time was a hot rump mess, hot buttered mess. Hopefully this thing will turn into at least an arrest if there is any validity to what this young lady is saying. And I believe there is. I truly do. I truly believe that a part that, that a situation did happen outside of the club at a uh, food restaurant or was it a food truck. Yeah. Food truck. But then again, when I start to do the math there, how did this thing evolve with them coming out of the club and them grabbing a woman? And then I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there are other. Now, listen, another piece I want to say before we close here. In the time of cell phones, how is it that we have absolutely no cell phone footage before we close? I just want to ask that. How do we have absolutely no cell phone footage? Or can anybody lead me to where I can find some? Is it on Instagram? Is it on Facebook? Have you seen footage? If you have, let me know. Because I'm obviously, you know, I don't know everything. I just know that what I saw right there was a hot mess. So if you know of any Instagram footage, you can email it to me to um, Felicia at FeliciaLockhart.com or info at FeliciaLockhart.com. Either way, you can reach out to me and send it to me and let me see it. Uh, and then we'll obviously bring it here and we'll talk about it. Um, and let me know who you think was very, who was more believable, even though the young lady did at, la at the later part of the video, show me her eye, show us her eye. Uh, and I can believe that makeup, as a makeup artist myself, I can believe that makeup can cover a multitude of things. But I think that as an attorney, I would have let it shine, baby, let it shine. Because it's getting picked apart by folks like me right now. Um, we did see the superficial wounds on her elbows. We also saw her in the brace. I'm not sure if she went immediately to the hospital after this incident. If she's looking to sue the Martini Lounge, Red Martini Lounge, it would have behooved her to go to the hospital and have all of that documented. Don't know anything about that because they're blending these two situations to mean exactly the same thing. One thing, and that is exonerating Judge Peterson. All right, folks. I appreciate each and every one of you for hanging out with us for about the last 30 minutes. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. And if you are new here, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. For those of you who are already subscribed to the channel, won't you consider becoming a channel member? Their channel member information, uh, there's channel member information down below in the description. Would love to have you. And if you would like to get yourself a little bit of, I don't know, stuff for the bugs this year. Yeah. Go ahead. There's an Avon link down there. Click it. Get yourself some skin so soft. Yeah. All right, folks. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Hey, everyone. It's me, Felicia of the Lockhart Perspective and Headlines with a Voice. I want to tell you a little secret. This is what I used to do because I don't do it anymore. I would go to the store, buy the barbecue sauce, pour it inside of a bowl, put a whole bunch of different spices, a dash of brown sugar, a dash of maple, and a dash of mustard, stir it all around, and everybody would be like, oh my gosh, this is the best, this is the best. But I was exhausted after all of that, and a lot of times I couldn't remember how many dashes of what I put in it. But I don't have to do that anymore, because now I just go to Judge Joe Brown's website, and I order his three-pack of bottled barbecue sauce. It is by far the best, and I do mean the best barbecue sauce I've ever eaten and when you go to his website and you order his three pack you'll see exactly what I mean head on over to jjbbbq.com and order Judge Joe Brown's barbecue sauce you'll be glad you did and you're gonna tell me about it I know you will the perspective